Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for sharing these five minutes with me. Um, this presentation will focus on a selection of my research about the origins and destinations of color and how both relate to the sustainability of our textile and dye industries. I'm a fiber artist and practitioner of performance, bookmaking, hiking, writing, and drawing, all as forms of research. My work is informed by the land, sea, and sky of my home in Oregon. The blue above this fire lookout is only a memory. For the past two weeks, the sky on the west coast of the US was as far from blue as it could be. The orange skies filled the land and the lungs of all beings with smoke and ash because of the catastrophic fires, a result of human-caused climate change. The weather is no longer small talk. Where does color come from? At first, this question may sound frivolous, but by asking where it comes from, perhaps I will learn where it is disappearing too. I've spent six years studying natural dyes and four years focusing on the imminent absence of blue. After my artist residency in a chemistry lab where I synthesized new inorganic pigments, I began to make my own botanical dyes. In 2016, I first noticed a cornflower growing a vivid blue. It reminded me of the blue I made in the lab, but instead of mixing an amalgam of rare earth materials at extreme temperatures, this blue grew from the soil all on its own. I later submerged cloth into a natural dye vat, saturated with blue cornflower petals. I was astonished when the protein and cellulose fibers appeared orange and green respectively. The absence of blue has since compelled my textile installations into the world of color, plants, and weaving. It is theorized that in the next 100 years, the blue of the swelling sea will noticeably begin to green and the skies will continue to gray above cities. Will the pH-dependent blue found in flowers also disappear? What will it mean to suffer the loss of color? Last year, I set up an experiment with cornflowers and several water sources that varied in pH to, to investigate my questions. Cornflowers possess a co-pigmentation complex. They express their protocyanin dye between reddish orange and green, depending on the pH of the dye solution. Instead of looking to the dye vat, I wanted to see if the color of the living plant would change as its water acidified. I watched the plants change day after day, a precious ability when there are many people like my father who are colorblind. In one month, the flowers began to bloom and the results were captivating. The blue in the cornflowers dissolved from purple to white as the water acidified. My project suggests that cornflowers may be indicators for the climate crisis and, along with other pH sensitive blues, they may indicate that the climate crisis is also a crisis of color. The challenge I set for myself was, and still is, to connect the poetics of color with the politics of absence to inspire sustainable action. This is urgent as the synthetic and dye, as the synthetic dye and textile industries are largely regulated by the EPA as hazardous waste generators. For my textile project, I studied the origins and destinations of color. I learned that blue is the only color completely absent from Homer's epic poems, and that blue is almost always introduced to language last across ancient texts from around the world. It seems no coincidence that, that it is also our shortest wavelength color and that we have far fewer blue sensitive cone cells in our eyes. I learned about Hexaplex trunculus, a mollusk that now produces purple instead of blue in our acidifying oceans. And I studied contemporary experiments in geoengineering to cool our planet by blasting a haze of particles into our sky to block the sun. I investigated the road salt in Detroit mined underneath the city and dyed blue, and I read about the economic relationship between woad and indigo. This color has rich layers to its story that stack slowly like webs traversing an endless cloth. Today, color is becoming a limited resource. In December 2019, I received an email from Dharma Trading Co. explaining their inability to fill orders for cerulean and turquoise. While Dharma was left hoping, Pantone's color of the year was announced for 2020, classic blue. I will leave you with words that carry me forward into the hazy unknown distance. From Bluets, titled after cornflowers, Maggie Nelson writes, the color of any planetary atmosphere viewed against the black of space and illuminated by a sun-like star will also be blue. In which case, blue is something of an ecstatic accident produced by void and fire. Thank you for listening to the ecstatic accidents that formed my ideas for my project.